Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 20, Susan Laurie Parks. Over the course of a career now in its fourth decade, Susan Laurie Parks has gradually ascended to the highest ranks of the American theater. Parks was born into a military family in Kentucky in the early 1960s, and like most so-called army brats, she moved frequently throughout her young life. She studied literature at Mount Holyoke College in Massachusetts, where one of her teachers was James Baldwin, who saw her genius at a young age and encouraged her to begin writing plays. Parks's earliest works often struggled to find audiences that understood her provocatively experimental methods. She broke through to wider acclaim in 1994, though, with the America play, which is about a gravedigger who makes money on the side by performing reenactments of Abraham Lincoln's assassination. She was the first African-American woman to win a Pulitzer Prize when she received it for her 2002 play Top Dog Underdog. More recently, she's received a number of Lifetime Achievement Awards for the 19 plays she has written and staged as of early 2021. She's also written four screenplays that have been turned into films, as well as a novel. Now let's watch a clip of Parks introducing a pair of actors, Brandon and Jason Durden, performing a scene from her acclaimed play, Top Dog Underdog. Okay, so the scene we're going to see, we're going to see uh, Brandon Durden as Lincoln and Jason Durden as Little Brother Booth. And it is Friday night. Big Brother Lincoln has brought home the bacon, the, the paycheck, his cash money, and the brothers are sitting down doing the budget for the week. Please welcome Jason Durden and Brandon Durden in a scene from Top Dog Underdog. Do the budget. Right. Okay. Let's see. We got $314. We put 100 aside for the rent. 100 a week makes the rent and we, we don't, don't want the rent spent. That leaves 214. We put aside 30 for electric leaving 184. We put aside 50 for the phones leaving 134. We don't got no phones. We pay our bills. They'll turn them back on. <laughs> we don't need no phones. How you gonna get a woman you don't got a phone? Uh, women, women these days are more cautious, more what do you call it? More circumspect. Sounds like a woman is going to call me. She don't want to call you. She's just doing a preliminary survey of the property. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, Link, you don't know nothing no more. She give you her number and she asks for yours. You give her your number, the phone number of your phone, hello, thereby telling her three things. Number one, you got a phone <laughs> that you ain't no smooth talking, smooth dressing, phoneless Joe. Two, that you is in possession of a telephone and a working telephone number, which is to say you got the cash and the wherewithal to acquire for yourself the world's most revolutionary communication apparatus and you together enough to pay your bills. Uh, What's three? You give her your number. You telling her that it's cool to make contact if she should so please. That is, that you ain't got no wife or wife approximation breathing down your neck too tough. 50 for the phones, leaving 134. We put aside 40 for medicine. Uh, price went up two bucks more a bottle. Put aside 50 then. That covers the bills. We got 84 left. 40 for meals together during the week, leaving 44. 30 for me, 14 for you. I got a woman I got to impress tonight. You didn't take out for the phones last week. Last week, I was depressed. <laughs> this week, things is looking up for both of us. For more information about Parks and her work, follow the link at the top of this page to the page about her on the Academy of Achievements website. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of a deeper dive into African-American literature. While you're there, 
you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio. Can you hear it?